Hi there folks, this is uh, Jason Burns and I uh, hope you're okay today. I'm doing a Bible study, uh, an overview of the book of Ezekiel. And I hope this is going to be a blessing to you and I hope it's going to be an encouragement to you. Um, we're going to just do a, a brief outline of the book and the outline that you can get uh, an outline is from the Old Testament explained and applied by Gareth Crosley Evangelical Press and the outline that he gives is the Lord commissions Israel, Israel uh, Ezekiel in uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 so let's uh, look at that Ezekiel uh, chapter 1 verse 1 uh, to to uh, 3 chapters 1 to 3 and um, reading from the Holman's translation I prefer the uh, King James and uh, the John MacArthur study Bible which is in the car so um, Study notes are the prophet Ezekiel wasn't once to mince his words. If Jeremiah is the weeping prophet, Ezekiel is the thundering prophet. His book mercifully condemns the spiritual condition of the Jewish people prior to the fall of Jerusalem. Like Jeremiah, Ezekiel announces that there will be severe, terrifying judgment, including the destruction of the city and its temple. The people couldn't believe it. How could God allow his holy temple to be destroyed? They thought as long as it was standing, they were okay. Ezekiel warned them not to place their trust in a building, but in God, yet they didn't listen. The last third of the book makes numerous prophecies concerning the restoration uh, of Israel and the rebuilding of the temple. And so you can divide the book into three parts. Uh, judgment upon sinful Judah in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to Ezekiel 24 verse 27 judgment against surrounding nations Ezekiel 25 verse 1 to Ezekiel 32 verse 32 and the restoration of Israel in Ezekiel 31 33 verse 1 to Ezekiel 48 to 35 We'll look at the timeline of the book in a minute, and we've got some notes by Vernon McGee, which we'll read out, uh, which um, they allow you to do this, uh, they allow you to copy uh, the material. Uh, and that's through, from Through the Bible. But we'll read some of those notes later on. So we'll read chapter one. On July 31st of my birth, my 30th year, while I was in Judea exile, beside the by river in Babylon the heavens were open to me and I saw visions of God this happened during the fifth year of King Jehoiakim's captivity the Lord gave a message to me Ezekiel son of Buzai a priest there beside the Kibber river in the land of Babylonians and I felt the hand of the Lord take hold of me and I looked and I saw a great storm coming towards me from the north driving before it a huge cloud that flashed with lightning and shone with brilliant light the fire inside the cloud glowed like the gleaming amber, and from the center of the cloud came four living beings that looked human except each had four faces and two pairs of wings. The legs were straight like human legs, but their feet were split like calves' feet shone like, like uh, burnished bronze. Beneath each of these w their wings I would see human hands, and the wings of each living being touched the wings of the two beings inside it. Each had human face in the front, the face of a lion on the right side, the face of an ox on the left side, and the face of an eagle on the back. And each had two pairs of outstretched wings, one pair stretched out to touch the wings of the living beings on either side of it, and the other pair covered its body. They went in whatever direction the spirit chose, and they moved straight forward in all direction without having to turn around. The living beings looked like coats 
of fire and brilliant torches looked as though lightning was flashing back and forth among them, and the living beings darted to and fro, flashing of lightning. And as I looked at these beings, I saw four wheels on the ground beneath them. One wheel belongs to each, and the wheels sparkled as if made of chrysolite. All four wheels looked the same, and each wheel had a second wheel turning crosswise within it, and the beings could move forward in any in any of the four directions they faced without turning as they moved. The rims of the four wheels were awesomely tall, and they were covered with eyes all around the edges. And when the four living beings moved, the wheels moved with them, and when they flew upward, the wheels went up too. The spirit of the four living beings was in the wheels, so whenever the spirit went, the wheels, the living beings went too. And when the living beings moved, the wheels moved. And when the living beings stopped, the wheels stopped. And when the living beings flew into the air, the wheels rose up. But the spirit of the living beings was in the wheels. There was a surface spread out above them, like the sky. It sparkled like crystal beneath this surface. The wings of each living being stretched out to touch the other wings. And each had two wings covering its body. And they flew their wings, roared like waves, crashing against the shore or like the voice of Almighty, or like the shouting of a mighty army. When they stopped, they let down their wings, and as they stood with their wings lowered, a voice spoke from beyond the crystal surface above them. And above the surface of their heads was what looked like a throne made of blue sapphire, and high above this throne was a figure whose appearance was like that of a man. From his waist up he looked like a gleaming amber, flickering like a fire, and from his waist down, he looked like a burning flame shining with splendor all around him was a glowing halo like a rainbow shining through the mountains. This was the way the glory of the Lord appeared to me. When I saw it, I fell face down in the dust and I heard someone's voice speaking to me. What an amazing vision that was. That's absolutely amazing. Um... come to it in a minute absolutely amazing uh, uh, absolutely amazing uh, commentary there uh, amazing chapter there I'm just going uh, and getting uh, some old uh, commentaries. Uh, this is Albert Barnes on chapter one, an old Bible scholar. The first three chapters, says Albert Barnes of Ezekiel, contains the account of Ezekiel's call. A mighty whirlwind issued from the north, and a dark cloud appeared in that quarter of the heavens. In the midst of the cloud is an area of dazzling brightness surrounded by encircling flames. Therein are seen four beings of strange, mysterious shape, standing so as to form a square. Below their feet are four wheels, and over their heads a throne on which is seated the likeness of a man dimly seen, while a voice issuing from the throne summons the prophet to his office. Th verse 1. Uh, of chapter one. So, um, on July 1st of my 30th year, while I was in Jerusalem, exiles beside the Kiba River in Babylon, the heavens were open to me. Verse one, the 13th year, the 30th year, being closely connected with as connected with as the first is rather in favor of considering this as a personal date. It is not improbable that Ezekiel was called to his office at the age prescribed in the law of Leviticus Numbers uh, 4.23. So 
sorry, in the law of the Levites, Numbers 4, 23, Numbers 4, 30, at which age both John the Baptist and our Lord began their ministry. His call is probably to be connected with the letter sent by Jeremiah to the captives in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 2. A Jewish day, but it is not certain that this extension formed an era in Babylon, and Ezekiel does not elsewhere give a double date, or even a Babylonian date. Other dates from the 18th year of Josiah, when Hilkiah discovered the book of the law, supposed to be a jubilee year, this would give 494 BC as a 30th year, but there is no other instance in Ezekiel of reckoning from this year. The word captive, the captives not in confinement but restricted to the place of their settlement. The fourth month, month is not expressed in the original, this is the common method. Before the captivity, the months were described not by proper names but by their order, the first, the second, the first month corresponded nearly with our April and after the captivity the Jews brought back with them the proper names of the months Nisan etc probably those used in Chaldea. Chiba, the modern Kabul rises near Nisibis and flows into the Euphrates near Kedkishes 200 miles north of Babylon. The vision of God. The exposition of the fundamental principle of the existence and nature of the supreme God and of the created angels was called by the rabbis the matter of the chariot. Compare 1 Chronicles 28 verse 18 in reference to the form of Ezekiel's vision of the Almighty. The subject was deemed so mysterious as to call for special caution in its study. The vision must be compared with the other manifestations of divine glory. Ezekiel 24.10, Isaiah 6.1, Daniel 7.9 and Revelations chapter 4 verse 2. Each of these visions are some of the outward signs are here recorded. If we examine these symbols, we shall find them to fall readily into two classes. Those which we employ in common with writers of all ages and countries, gold, sapphire, burnishes, brass, the terrible crystals are familiar images of majesty, glory, thunders, lightnings, and the rushing storm are awful power. But we come to images to our mind, strange and almost grotesque, that the four living creatures had their grand work in the cherubim, there can be no doubt, and yet their shapes were very different because they were symbols, not likenesses. They could yet be the same, though their appearances was varied. Of what are they symbolic? They may, according to the Talmud, have symbolized order of angels and not persons. According to others, they were figures of the four Gospels, actuated by one spirit, spread over the four quarters of the globe, upon which, as pillars of the church is borne up, and over whom the word of God sights enthroned, the general scope of the the vision gives the best intuition of the meaning. Ezekiel saw the likeness of the glory of God. Here his glory is manifest in the works of creation as light and fire, lightning and cloud are the usual marks which inanimate creation betoken of the presence of God. Psalm 18, 6-14, so the four living ones symbolizes animate creation. The forms are typical, the lion and the ox and the beast of the field, wild and tame. The eagle of the birds of the air, while man is the rational being supreme upon the earth. And the human type predominates over all and gives character and unity to the four, and thus form one creation. Further, these four present the constitu constituent parts of man's nature, the ox, the animal of sacrifices, faculty of suffering, the lion, the king of beasts, his faculty of ruling, the eagle, the keen eye and soaring wing, his faculty of imagination, and the man, his spiritual faculty which accentuates all the rest. Christ is the perfect man, so these four in perfect harmony typify him, who came to earth to his Father's will, and as a man is Lord in the kingdom of nature, so is Christ Lord in the kingdom of grace. The wings represent the power by which all creation rises and falls at God's will. The one spirit, the unity and harmony of his works, the free motion in all direction, the universality of his providence, the number four is the symbol of the world. With its four quarters, the veiled bodies, the inability of all creatures to stand in the presence of God. The noise of the wings, the testimony borne by creation to God. Psalm 19, verse 1 and 3. The wheels connect the vision with the earth, the wings with the heaven, while above them is the throne of God in heaven. Since the eye of the seer is turned upward, the lines of the vision become less distinct. It is as if he were struggling against the impossibility of expressing in words the object of his vision. Yet on the summit of the throne 
and is he who can only describe some sort of form of man that Yahweh the eternal God is spoken of we cannot doubt such passages Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 John chapter 1 14 John chapter 12 41 justifiers in maintaining that the revelation of the divine glory here made to Ezekiel as its consummation of the fulfillment in the person of Christ the only begotten of the Father of God the vision in the opening chapter of Ezekiel is the most general form. The manifestation of the glory of the living God is repeated more than once in the course of the book. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 2, Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 4, Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 3 and 10, and Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 22, and Ezekiel 40 verse 3. The person manifested is always the same, but the form of the vision is modified according to special circumstances. So that's just a little bit of understanding um, Ezekiel chapter 1 and the first few verses. So let's just uh, get a, a little bit more of an outline of the book. So you have the... Lord's Commission of Ezekiel in chapter 1 verse 3 to 27 then you have the visions from the Lord which can be specifically broken down to the time of the vision in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to 28 the four living creatures Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 and 3 the four wheels uh, Sorry, the, the time of the vision, Ezekiel 1, 1 and 3. The four living creatures, Ezekiel 1, 4 to 14. The four wheels, Ezekiel 1, 15 to 20, 21. The firmament, Ezekiel 1, 22 to 25. And the appearance of a man, Ezekiel 1, 26, 28. The task assigned to Ezekiel, the messages for the Israelites. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1 and 10. Food for the prophet, Ezekiel 3 verse 1 to 3 the content of the message Ezekiel 3 verse 4 to 11 the prophet carried by the spirit Ezekiel 3 12 14 responsibilities outlined Ezekiel 3 15 21 the glory of the Lord appears Ezekiel 3 22 27 then we have the judgment against Judah before the fall of Jerusalem which covers Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 1 to Ezekiel 24 verse 27 here we see four signs indicating the forthcoming age siege of Jerusalem the siege of Jerusalem from Ezekiel 4 chapter 4 verse 1 to Ezekiel 5 verse 17 we see the clay tablet in Ezekiel 4 1 to 3 the prophet lying on his side Ezekiel 4 verse 4 to 8 the eating defiled bread Ezekiel 4 verse 9 to 17 her shade from head and beard Ezekiel 5 1 to 4 the signs explained Ezekiel 5 verse 5 to 17 two messages of impending judgment from Ezekiel chapter 6 verse 1 to Ezekiel 7 27 here we find the destruction of Judea in Ezekiel chapter 6 verse 1 to 14 the destruction of the whole nation in Ezekiel 7 verse 1 to 27 then we have the visions of Jerusalem destruction and promised remnant from Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 to Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 25 we have the visions of the glory of God in the city Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 8 cha Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1 to 4 visions of a nation in the temple in Ezekiel 8 verse 5 to 18 visions of the slaying of the citizens in Ezekiel 9 verse 1 to 11 visions of the glory of departing Ezekiel 10 verse 1 to 8 Visions of wheels and cherubim, Ezekiel 10, verse 9 to 22. Visions of 25 wicked princes, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 1 to 12. A promised remnant, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 13 to 25. Then we have symbols of judgment. Preparing for captive, which cover from Ezekiel 12, verse 1 to Ezekiel 24, 27. We have preparing for captivity in Ezekiel 12, verse 1 to 16. Eating with trembling and anxiety, Ezekiel 12, 17, 28. Warning to false prophets, Ezekiel 13, 1 to 23. Warning to the elders, Ezekiel 14, 1 to 23. Jerusalem-like vine, a vine fit 
only for burning, Ezekiel 51 to 8. Israel marriage in unfaithfulness, Ezekiel 16, 1 to 63. The parable of the eagle and the vine, Ezekiel 17, 1 to 24. Personal responsibility for sin, Ezekiel 18, 1 to 32. Lamentation for Israel's princes, Ezekiel 19, 1 to 14. Final warnings before the fall of Jerusalem, Ezekiel 20, verse 1 to 24. And, uh, sorry, Ezekiel 21 to 24, 27. Judgment against the surrounding nations, Ezekiel 25, verse 1, to Ezekiel 32, to 32. Prophecies of return and restoration, Ezekiel 33, verse 1, to Ezekiel 48, verse 35. The return of the Israelites to their own land, Ezekiel 33, verse 1, to Ezekiel 39, 29. The responsibility of the watchman, Ezekiel Ezekiel 33, verse 33, Irresponsible Shepherds, Ezekiel 34, 1 to 31, Judgment on Mount Sire, Edom, Ezekiel 35, 1 to 15, Blessings on Israel, Ezekiel 36, verse 1 to Ezekiel 37, verse 28, Judgment against Gog, Magog, and others, Ezekiel 38, verse 1 to Ezekiel 39, 29. Then finally, the restoration of Israel in Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 1 to Ezekiel 48 verse 35. The new temple is Ezekiel 40 verse 1 to 43 verse 27. Ezekiel, uh, new worship is Ezekiel 44 verse 1 to Ezekiel 46 28. The restored city of God, Ezekiel 47 verse 1 and Ezekiel 48 35. In the book of Gareth Crosley in the Evangelical Prayer, he writes, The name Ezekiel means God strengthens. This prophet takes into captivity, taken into captivity, meeting hard opposition from fellow Israelites in exile, Ezekiel 3, 8 and 9, needed the courage and resolution that the Lord alone could supply. His ministry was quite extraordinary. The book bearing his name displays a man of firm resolution, thoroughly convinced of the seriousness of obeying the law of God yet with a shepherd's tender heart, well served in practical theology, he had a deep love for the people of God. The prophet declares the sovereign and glory of God on the one hand, and the personal responsibility of the sinner on the other. The book is difficult to interpret because it is full of imagery. The author uses visions, prophecies, parables, allegories, signs, symbolic acts to dramatize the message of God to his people in captivity and to those still in Jerusalem. Centuries later the people, the Apostle Peter was to say of the writing of the fellow Apostle Paul in which are some things hard to understand which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of scripture 2 Peter 3.16 The book of Ezekiel is open to similar misinterpretation the complexities must not be allowed however to overthrow the clear and wonderful lessons which the great book contains that's uh, Crosley. Mark Deaver about the book writes in uh, outline uh, message of the Old Testament. Almost 500 years ago, a little volume was published with these words on a title: "A fruitful, pleasant, and witty work, the best state of a public wheel, and of a new island called Utopia." A book written by the right worthy famous Thomas More Knight in Utopia. More depicts an imaginary island through the eyes of a traveller. The society of people living on this island is perfect. When the book was first released, More's friends could see the humour of the piece. They knew exactly what he was doing, subtly criticising the imperfections of the real island kingdom of which he was prominent servant. England under the rule of King Henry VIII. Like most nations, the nations of England had good parts and bad. Yet under King Henry, writing about the bad, or at least directly, could be dangerous. Through his witty fiction, Moore had found a vehicle to comment on his time, in an entertaining and ostensibly unthreatening fashion to those who would read it. Even the name he gave to his fiction, Ireland, was artfully chosen Utopia. We use that word in English today to refer to a land of ideal perfection. Well, it was coined by Moore, and it was a pun in Greek. Utopia 
means place. Uh, the U either mean good, as an eulogy, giving utopia the meaning good place, or it can refer to negation or no, giving utopia the meaning no place. Really, the name says it all. Such a good place is no place, not in this world anyway. Is that right? In no place, finally, the good place we all dream about. Is that right? Is no place finally the good place we all dream about? Is it only an ancient myth, an old fairy tale, a child's dream, or the projection of our inner desires? Does paradise really exist? I don't know how you would answer the question, but if you feel the another, uh, an, if you feel that another better place must exist, and that for some reason it has not yet been revealed, then the Old Testament book of Ezekiel is well suited for you. In our present series in the major prophets called called Big Hopes, we turn to this book, this hope for paradise in the book of Ezekiel, where in some unusual ways God teaches his people some very important things about himself and about this hope. Our text is the entire book of Ezekiel. Three studies ago we heard the prophet Isaiah warn Judea's kings Judea's king Ezekiah about the Assyrian army while assuring him of God's care. Two studies ago, we heard the prophet Jeremiah, who lived one century after Isaiah, urged Judah and Jerusalem to follow the Lord's direction by surrendering to the Babylonian army. In the last study, we considered the lamentations of the individual, perhaps Jeremiah, who was in Jerusalem during its siege and fall. In our present study, we encounter the prophet Ezekiel, who lived at the same time as Jeremiah, but whose ministry actually took place in Ezekiel in exile in Babylon. The Babylonians carried Israel's, Israelites off to exile in Babylon in several waves, and Ezekiel was one among the early waves. He probably traveled to Babylon in 597 BC, along with the royal family and other leading citizens of Jerusalem. Remember, Jerusalem was not entirely destroyed until a decade later in 587 BC. Ezekiel had been trained as a priest in Jerusalem, and he knew the religious life of his people well. So if you want to buy those books I would encourage you to buy uh, The Message of the Old Testament by Mike Diva, uh, published by Crossway Books. Uh, very, It's one of the best introductions of the Old Testament. And then uh, The Old Testament Explained and Applied by Gareth Crosley. Um, and if you type in Albert Barnes, um, commentary on the book of Ezekiel, you'll be able to download that book for free, it'll be all over the place on the internet. Uh, um, now we're going to look at study notes of, of Vernon McGee, J, Dr. J. Vernon McGee. These study notes are free to download if you want to download them, if you go, if you type in Verna Dr. J. Werner McGee, M. C. G. E. E. Notes and Outlines, PDF, Ezekiel. You'll be able to download these notes and outlines for free, and they will give you an excellent introduction. So we're just going to look at the book in a little bit more outline now. Just put these books away. I'm now going to be using the King James Version, if I do quote the Bible, it's my preferred translation. So let's uh, just read uh, Vernon McGee's notes. This is Jason Burns and uh, looking at the book of Ezekiel. I hope this is informative for you and gives you some understanding. The reason why I'm doing this is because I, I do hear atheists every now and again when they attack the Bible, they seem to quote quite a bit from the book of Ezekiel. And I just thought it'd be nice just to, for us to just get an understanding of the book. So if anyone starts quoting it, we can understand what the book's about. Vernon McGee says Ezekiel was a priest. So let's look at Ezekiel chapter 1.
Ezekiel chapter 1, if you Bible out. So don't forget, you can download this PDF. Notes and outlines, Ezekiel, Dr. J. Werner McGee, and they will you will get some wonderful uh, information, wonderful notes and outlines there, absolutely wonderful. Okay. So Ezekiel was a priest. Ezekiel chapter one verse three, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzin, in the land of the Chaldeans. So the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest. So he was a priest. So Ezekiel was a priest, but never served in that office as he was still a young man when he was taken captive during the reign of Jehoiakim. So let's turn to uh, the Bible. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 24. So we're going to just look at this briefly now. Uh, and then, so if you go to 2 Kings, 2 Kings, 24, chapter 24, 2 Kings, chapter 24, verse 10 to 16. At the time of the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged, and Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city and his servants, and besieged it. And Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers, and took the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of the reign. So that's the kind of background uh, Ezekiel lived in, in the time God's people were taken into captivity. Very important to get that as a background if you're studying the prophets. Anyhow, Daniel was taken captive in the first captivity during Jehoiakim's reign, about the eighth year before Ezekiel was taken captive. Ezekiel was contemporary with Jeremiah and Daniel, and Jeremiah was an old man who spoke to the remnant that remained in the land. Daniel spoke in the court of the king of Babylon, and Ezekiel spoke to the captives who had been brought to the rivers of Babylon, while the other captives wept. They remembered Zion. Ezekiel exulted in the great visions ever given exalted in the greatest visions ever given to any prophet. I want to just encourage you today. Uh, end of quote. That was Vernon McGee uh, talking about the writer Ezekiel. Notice it was a terrible time. They were in captivity. The, the, the people of God, the work of God was in a mess. But yet God had Jeremiah, the prophet, the old Jeremiah. The, he was a young man at first and he started as a great prophet at the beginning as a young man but then he's an old man and he sees the people of God taken into captivity but there he is speaking for God as an old man then we have the young man Daniel he was taken into captivity serving God and we have Ezekiel taken into captivity but God had his men even in the midst of the darkest time and you know something even in the midst of the darkest time today whenever the work of God seems to be floundering God will have his people doing the work of God so do not be discouraged there will always be a remnant there will always be a people of God the enemies of God cannot pull the church of God down there are the people of God everywhere serving the Lord and doing his will and you're not alone do you remember as, um, do you remember Elijah who said I, I, I am only left and there he was depressed it's only me left, Lord, he said, didn't he? I, 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 he was bereft. He was lonely. He felt that there was only him. And God had to say, I have 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Do you remember? And God had to teach him that he was not alone. And it might be difficult today for you in the battle for the Lord and standing up for him in these days. And you might feel that you're all alone. God has his remnant that will not bow the knee to secularism, but will bow the knee to Jesus. And you must be encouraged. Now, uh, Vernon McGee's notes, he notes his message. His message, says Vernon McGee, about Ezekiel was the most spiritual of the prophets, as he dealt more with the person.
person of God, someone has said, as he is the prophet of the Spirit, as Isaiah is the prophet of the Son, and Jeremiah the prophet of the Father. During the first years of the captivity, the false prophet said that the people would be re returned to Jerusalem and that the city would not be destroyed. It was not until the final deportation during Zedekiah's reign that the city was destroyed some 11 years after Ezekiel was taken captive. Jeremiah had sent a message to Babylon, Jeremiah 29, saying that the city would be destroyed. Ezekiel confirmed this message and warned the people that they must turn to God before they returned to Jerusalem. Ezekiel began his ministry five years after his captivity when he was about 30 years old. His method, in many ways he spoke in the darkest days of the nation. He stood at the bottom of the valley in the darkest corner. He had to meet the false hope given by the false prophets and the indifference and the despondency begotten in the days of sin and disaster. The people would not listen to him or his message therefore he was to a new method instead of speaking in parables he acted them out Ezekiel 24 24 we have had flagpole sitters and walk a thons in our day which attracted the attention of the public this sort of thing was the method of Ezekiel and it's indicative of a day of decay the meaning his meaning Ezekiel was the prophet of the glory of the Lord Three prophets of Israel spoke when they were out of the land Ezekiel Daniel and John each wrote an apocalypse Although they used highly symbolic language, they saw the brightest light and the, held the highest hope. Ezekiel saw the Shekinah glory of the Lord leave Solomon's temple, and he saw the return of the glory of the Lord, which was projected into the future during the kingdom. The meaning of Ezekiel is seen in the coming glory during the kingdom. Ezekiel looked beyond the suffering of Christ to the glory that should follow 1 Peter 1.11. In the outline, and we'll give an outline now, uh, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, we see the display of God's glory. In uh, book uh, chapter 2, we see the prophet's call. In chapter 3, we see the prophet, the preparation that the prophet is a watchman. In chapter 4, we see the judgment on Jerusalem. In chapter 5, we see a sign of the prophet shaving his hair. In chapter 6, we see the sword fall upon Jerusalem and a remnant to be saved. In chapter 7, we find the we see the final prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem. In chapter 8, we see the vision of the glory of the temple, the defilement by idolatry, explain, explains its destruction. In chapter 9, we shall see the Shekinah glory prepared to leave the temple. In chapter 10, we see the Shekinah glory fill holy, a holy place leaves the temple. In chapter 11, we see a prophecy against the rulers of Jerusalem. In chapter 12, we see Ezekiel enact destruction of Jerusalem. In chapter 13, we see prophecy against the pseudo-prophets and prophetesses. In chapter 14, we see a prophecy against the idolatry of the elders and destruction of Jerusalem. In chapter 15, we see the vision of the vine. In chapter 16, we see Jerusalem likened to abandoned baby, a baby adopted by God. Chapter 17, we see the riddles of the two eagles. In chapter 18, we see the wages of sin is death, and Jerusalem is in the awful example. In chapter 19, we see the elegy of Jehovah over princes of Israel. In chapter 20, we see the review of Israel's long history of sins and future judgment and restoration. In chapter 21, we see the king of Babylon to remove last king of Davidic line until Messiah comes, Ezekiel, Ezekiel 21. Ezekiel in Ezekiel 22, we see the abundance of Jerusalem. In chapter 23, we see the parable of the two sisters. In chapter 24, we see the parable of the boiling pot. In chapter 25, we see against Ammon, Moab, Edom, and Felicia, prophecies against them and, and announcements against them. We see announcements against Tyre in, in chapters 26 to 28. Announcements against Egypt in chapters 29 to 32. We see the recommission of the prophet in chapter 33 and 34, the restoration of Israel in chapter 35 and 36, the resurrection of Israel in chapter 37, the, repu the repudiation of Gog and Magog in chapters 38 and 39, the rebuilding of the temple in chapter 40, 42, the return of the glory of the Lord in chapter 43, 48. Again, we go into... 
the first chapter, I saw a vision of God compare Ezekiel to other captives who said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept, we remembered Zion. Psalm 37, 1. What a contrast, visions and weeping. Chapter 1, verse 3 to 28, Ezekiel has the most profound vision of the glory of God. If anyone asks whether the vision is lucid, I confess its obscurity and that I can scarcely understand it by John Calvin. It is not, says Vernon McGee, a vision of this mechanical age. This is not the aeroplane or the missile. It is not a vision of the person of God. He is not seen here. It is a vision of the presence of God. It is a theophany. The God of glory is riding triumphantly in his own chariot, unseen by mortal men. Several striking features are observable. Flashing light in verse 4, 13 and 14, brighter than the sun, similar to an atomic explosion. Our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 20. God is light, 1 John 1, 5. When Christ confronted Paul on the road to Damascus, he saw a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. Acts 26, 13. Secondly, the glory of God in verse 28, his presence is there. No man has seen God at any time in John 1, 18. Ezekiel saw more than did Moses, David, Isaiah, or Daniel. Vision of cherubim, verse 5 to 12, 15 to 25 in, in Ezekiel chapter 1. These living creatures resemble the description of cherubim. Wheels in verse 15 and 16, ceaseless activity and energy of divine power. It is God moving forward his providence. Chapter 5, uh, verse 5, uh, sorry, um, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 10, we see the face of a man, which is intelligent purpose and eyes. Uh, anthropomorphic terms, ascribing to God bodily attributes, appearances of a, a man is a prophetic of incarnation, verse 26. Four faces, verse 10, Revelations chapter 4, verse 6 and 8, remi remind us, of the four Gospels in which Christ is revealed in four aspects in his kingship symbolized by the lion Matthew as a servant symbolized by the ox Mark in his perfect humanity symbolized by the face of a man Luke in his deity symbolized by the flying evil John Eagle John we then in have chapter 2 the prophetic office the Holy Spirit comes upon Ezekiel just to know that Ezekiel to start his ministry saw the glory of God if we're going to be effective in ministry we have to see the glory of God we have to meditate on the power and the majesty and the glory of God and we have to preach for the glory and honor of God and when we begin to see the glory of God then we are ready to minister the word of God in prophets in chapter 2 we see the prophets call and inducement we have from the office in verse 1 and 2 in chapter 2 Ezekiel the Holy Spirit comes upon Ezekiel in preparation for his office in the Bible he said you have an unction from the Holy One the Apostle Paul said we came in the demonstration of the Spirit and the power if you're going to preach and serve the Lord you need the Holy Spirit to anoint you in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3 and 5 the prophetic call he is to speak for God but will not be heard or obeyed if you're going to be a servant of God you have to be called the Apostle Paul said, the Apostle servant called of God. He was called of God. Jeremiah was called of God. God said, I have chosen you before you were even born. God calls his men to serve him. And he calls women. He calls them to serve him. Are you called today? If you have a call from God, Samuel was called. Samuel, 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 says God. He had a call three times. And Samuel obey the call. If you're going to serve God today, you have to obey the call of God. If God wants to send you to Afghanistan, then go to Afghanistan. If God calls you to serve a little church, a little evangelical, Baptist, Methodist, whatever church it is, Anglican, a little church in a little countryside where you're not famous or you're never going to be known as a pastor or preacher, but if God has called you there, then you must go there. Maybe in your ministry, wherever you are, as a Sunday school teacher or as a, a youth worker or as a pastor or whatever you're serving God in your call, there will be opposition. There will be people who will try and stop the ministry. There will be people who will try and sow division. But when that comes, when the opposition comes, you must say to yourself, Lord, you called me. And if you called me, you will keep me in the midst of this ministry. 
So do not be discouraged by opposition. Do not be discouraged by those who will try to pull your ministry apart. Remember Satan wants to bring you down. Remember Satan will bring temptation into your ministry. He will attack you in your ministry. And he will try to pull your ministry down. But you must put on, as in Ephesians chapter 6, the full armor of God. You need to put on the full armor of God. You need to put on the armor. Let's go to Ezekiel, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 now. Now, I want to encourage you, before we get to Ephesians chapter 6, don't forget to get the wonderful notes and outlines by J. Vernon McGee. And read it all for yourself. An outline of the book of Ezekiel in PDF form. And you can get it through the Bible, um, Vernon McGee, McGee, and on Ezekiel. PDF free, and uh, they allow you to use that material. So go and read it. You can put it on site. Excellent material for coming to know the book of Ezekiel. And if you want to go into more depth, type in Albert Barnes. There you'll get a massive classic commentary. Just type in Albert Albert uh, Barnes, uh, the book of Ezekiel commentary, PDF, and it will come up somewhere. And you can download that wonderful commentary and give you a wonderful in-depth study of the book of Ezekiel. Okay, but Ezekiel was called of God and he obeyed the call and he didn't find it easy at times. So let's just go now to Ephesians chapter 6. It says in verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Now, come on, you've been called of God, be strong. Ezekiel had to be strong in the midst of a time of turbulence. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God and ye may be able to stand again see our battle is not with men and women our battle is with the devil the devil is using people using groups using people to attack the Christian faith but we are against the devil and his emissaries put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against death flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereon with all perseverance and supplication for the saints oh my friend put on the all armor of God we are in a battle and oh, no, I regret how many times I have fought in the flesh oh I have fought in the flesh so many times and made things so much worse by fighting in the flesh and we must fight in the spirit and armor of God we need the Spirit of God. We need the truth of God. We need the Word of God. These are the things that God has given us to do battle against evil. Not our own wisdom, not philosophical thinking, but the power and presence of God in the Word of God and in the Holy Spirit. So my dear brethren today, study the book of Ezekiel. Go into it in more depth. Get grounded into it. It will lift your heart. It will renew your heart because you will begin to see the greatness and the majesty and the glory of God. For God is over all. And God will be with you. In the midst of the battle, in the midst of the storm, you will know the presence of God. For he is a wonderful God, a gracious God, a mighty God. And God called Ezekiel in a very difficult time. I remember, or you can remember the Apostle Paul. He said, I quote, all have forsaken me. But he talked about God standing by his side. And all may forsake you, but God will stand by you. God will stand by your side. Oh, my friend, you have been called of God. And you have been given a ministry, whatever that ministry is, he 
he has given you that minute. And you might feel the battle is too intense. You might feel the battle is too much for you. The battle is too much. It is pulling you down. It is becoming too hard and too difficult. You are tired and you are battle beleaguered. But let's just read you a few words just to encourage you here. You are battled and beleaguered. Here's some words for you. Trust in the Lord in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. When you're in the complexity of the battle, complexity in your ministry, trust in him. He will guide you. Ezekiel, it was complex. It was difficult. It was hard, but he allowed God to guide him. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and are safe come under the banner of God Isaiah 41 10 so do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand he will uphold you my friend he will keep you he will keep you strong he will keep you faithful John 14 27 peace I leave with you my peace I give you I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid John 16 33 I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace and in this world you will have trouble but take heart I have overcome the world God is over the world and will keep you Psalm 46 verse 1 and 3 God is a refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble therefore we will not fear Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with the surging sea layer. God is with you. God will keep you. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, God, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. When your enemies try to intimidate you, call upon the Holy Spirit to give you the boldness to stand for him. Hallelujah. Psalm 16, 8, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I will not be shaken Psalm 55 22 cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never let the righteous fall 1 Peter 5 7 cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you Isaiah 26 3 you will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you Psalm 118 verse 14 and 16 the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous the Lord's right hand has done mighty things the Lord's right hand is lifted high the Lord's right hand has done mighty things hallelujah Psalm 119 verse 114 to 115 you are my refuge and my shield I have put my hope in, in your word away from me you evil doers that I keep that I may keep the commands of my God Psalm 119 25 I am laid low in the dust preserve my life according to your word Psalm 119 verse 50 my comfort in my suffering is this your promise preserves my life Psalm 119 71 it was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees I call the Lord in my distress and he hears me Psalm 120 verse 1 God is with you my friend God will give you strength God will encourage you thank you for your blessings today we give you the praise and we give you
you the glory and the honor. And Father God, we commit this day to you. We thank you for encouraging us in the book of Ezekiel. We pray now, Lord, that you be with us and bless us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for your glory. May those who have done this study today, may they be encouraged and be blessed in their walk with you, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed today. May you be blessed in the in the knowledge of God. Is Isaiah 40, 28, 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He understands is his understanding is unchangeable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And there Ezekiel was in captivity, and he was battered and beleaguered and broken. And then God gave him the vision, the vision of, of his glory. And it refreshed Ezekiel, and it strengthened Ezekiel, and it helped Ezekiel. And so, have you not known, says Isaiah 40, 28, 31, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unchangeable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 17 But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. May God bless you now. I hope this study in the book of Ezekiel has just encouraged you to whet your appetite. We could not cover everything in the book but I hope it's given you a little bit of an appetite to maybe study the book, to, to look into the book, uh, and to to uh, get to grips with the book. And uh, may God bless you, and may you be encouraged today. God bless.